Uh, the other thing I think that's happening that's very important is the development of what we call disease-modifying therapies. Now, we don't know what causes Alzheimer's disease. All we know is that people who are affected by it begin to have loss of nerve cells, sort of a premature death of cells in certain important parts of the brain, the memory area being the most and earliest affected, but eventually other parts of the brain involving the ability to find words, to find your way around, like navigate um, around your environment, they start to be affected. And the front part of the brain, which is really the higher order mental control area of the, of the person that has to do with planning and future thinking and organizing um, how you spend your day and what your goals are and reaching toward them, those areas of the brain start to be affected by the disease. Again, we don't know why, but it inexorably, relentlessly progresses over time. In fact, it's thought that it starts many years before we're aware of it. Um, people have found pathological changes in the brain in people in their 30s that indicate that they will eventually get Alzheimer's disease. So when it shows up in the average ages in the mid-70s, it's already very established in the brain, and uh, therefore the, the idea that we can cure that, I think, is a little ahead of our time at the moment. But what we can do is we can try to reduce its impact, maybe stop it once we recognize that a person is developing it at a stage before they're really disabled. And uh, these new developments, I think, are moving us in that direction. So um, there are some pills that reduce the production of the abnormal protein called amyloid. There are now even infusion studies underway where we're giving antibodies to amyloid to try to remove it from the brain in, in people with Alzheimer's disease. We have a very active clinical trials program at Sunnybrook, and we're involved in these uh, studies uh, where we have you know, patients, patient volunteers with Alzheimer's disease coming in every two months, for example, to get their infusions, just as they do for certain kinds of cancer or you know, arthritis and so forth. And so this is a very exciting and important development. It's still too early to say if it will work, but it's, it's got a sound scientific basis and it holds out hope that we may be able to at least arrest the disease or slow down its progression in a very real way.